Welcome back everybody to the Shooting Gallery New England. My name is Joe. We're happy to have you here today. We have a great video on finally the Ruger 1022 semi-automatic rifle. We're gonna have a lot of shooting footage and a lot of videos coming up about this, so stay tuned. Let's get into some shooting. All right, everybody, so what can I say about the 1022? Well, this is America's rifle and everybody should have one. It's one of my absolute favorite rifles. This is like my bare bones stock. Like I said before in previous podcasts at the Shooting in the Woods podcast, go check them out. We have, I'll have a link to that playlist in the description of the video. Um, this, is a, this is one of the rifles that I plan on customizing and start doing a lot of videos because this is one of the most customizable rifles in the United States and across the world. So, real uh, real quick for specs, we have a 16 and a half inch barrel. This is the regular carbine version, walnut stock. Um, I do have the BX25 trigger, but I swapped out for the video so we can have the bare bones analysis of it. Uh, I did add a Picatinny rail that came with the gun, so I'm able to when I want to add a scope. Uh, it comes with flip up rear sights, a gold pin front sight. Uh, this trick, the stock trigger weighs in at about six pounds. Not that bad, uh, it's a semi-automatic, but the good thing is these are so highly customizable. And since we are in Massachusetts, I do have a pre-band 50 round mag that I'll show later on the video, but we're gonna be running the regular 10 shot box mags just for the review. So enough yapping, let's get into some shooting. All right. to the day I'm able to buy BX25 mags and even the hunt around drum mags for this thing. It does not have a last round bolt open but you can buy a part to get the last round bolt open. So again it's very customizable but for bare bones it's a perfect starter rifle for anybody. No recoil because it is a 22, but it's shooting a little high because I don't because of the Picatinny rail is kind of riding right above the front sight. But it's still for if it's shooting pretty high, still is decent accuracy. We're at about 50 yards right now. Open sights. I'm trying to decide what type of first variable optic scope I want. I want a variable power so I can kind of adjust where I'm shooting because especially with 22 red dot sights do not really work for me. Um, so I'm deciding what I might, I might go with like a Bur a Burris for, at first, maybe a primary arms and then we're going to work our way up and every, there's going to be a video on every scope that we put on our 1022s so you guys can get a feel for what's a good scope for a 1022 rifle. Well, I got one more mag, then we're gonna return to the bench. I'm gonna load up some magazines. I'm not gonna put that on video because I have way too many magazines to load up. But uh, we'll go over mags and stuff like that. And uh, later on, we'll do a little bit more shooting. I'll give you my final thoughts. And don't and for, don't forget, we are gonna have a lot of videos on the 1022. So stay tuned. Alright everybody, so I just want to touch briefly on magazine availability for the Ruger 1022. They're going to be 
different depending on what state you live in because of magazine bands and stuff like that but generally your ruger 1022 is going to ship with a 10 round box mag and or a bx25 ruger made 25 round magazine now in band states we're not especially here in mass we're not allowed to have um anything higher than 10 rounds but as long as they're made before 1994 they're considered pre-banned so right here is a uh, butler creek 50 round mag for the ruger 1022 i have a few of these and the good thing is they can clip together and they turn into a 100 round banana clip whatever you want clip the zine you know just try to piss everybody off at this point uh but this is also a 10 round box mag so you're gonna have a wide variety there's a lot of other after third party magazines i'm telling you right now they're not gonna be as high quality even these butler creeks aren't really that high quality you can't clean them and they are going to end up uh, malfunctioning on you a lot. And at that point, you have to throw them away. The good thing about these box mags and the BX25 mags, you're able to clean them. And they make BX15s for like charger pistols and stuff like that, which is essentially a pistol 1022 action. So just wanted to touch on that real quickly. And then we'll get back to shooting and we'll give you our final thoughts. Okay, everybody, so we're going to test at this point the reliability of these Butler Creek 50 round mags. Like I said before, these aftermarket third party mags are going to be a little bit unreliable for you, but again, they're cheap. You can, in non banned states, you can pick these up for about like 15 bucks for a 50 round mag, sometimes 25, depending on where you get them. But like I said, these are pre-banned. I bought these new in the bag, so they are a little bit reliable, but I, I didn't load the full 50 because again, you're gonna see the reliability. Um, we're shooting regular Remington Thunderbolt. I'm trying to get rid of the stock because I despise the Thunderbolt. Uh, I, at one point when 22 was hard to find, I decided, oh, I'm just gonna bulk up and Thunderbolt was cheap. I'm not proud of it. I don't recommend buying the ammo because it's you can get CCI mini mags and you can get auto match for much cheaper now and it's much better quality ammunition but it's 40 grain range ammunition so there is one thing I would like to point out about the 1022 you can upgrade this part the stock bolt release is very annoying to deal with if, when you have to hold the bolt open because it's like you have to like kind of feel around for it and this might actually work this time but yep didn't work so i have to pull the bolt back press it all the way up and up and then see if it will work and you gotta play with it a few times i'm not the biggest fan of it i will do a video on how to replace this um you know, sometimes you have to take the mag fully out rock it out And then, come on. Of course, when I'm filming, this is gonna happen. But it's not, I'm not the biggest fan of it. And this is the exact reason. The extended bolt release, there we go. That's what we want. The extended bolt release is a very easy part to replace. I will do a video on it once I pick one up, which will be very soon. But. We're going to try and look at the reliability of these aftermarket mags. Okay. Again, we're at like 50 yards. See? already one malfunction and what i like to do is i like to say okay drop the mag see what's wrong looks like it was a failure to eject let's try this again
Yep, there we go again. At this point, I'm gonna try and just make sure I can point it down range. I don't know if you can see that. That's another common malfunction you're gonna see with these types of magazines. Failure to feed, and look at this, it's just, we're done, that was the last round, and it's just, it shakes. You have to, to get it all the way back. They're not really that reliable, but for, as you can see, that well uh, versed shooting session, three malfunctions out of, give or take, 45, 50 rounds. It's really not that bad. 22 is extremely dirty, and you are gonna get malfunctions with ammunition, depending on what ammunition you use. But for a 50 round mag that was pretty much fully loaded, that's really not that bad. Only the last couple of rounds. Let me just fire off this last round so we can clear the firearm. And again, it doesn't lock back on the last round fired. Lock the bolt back and it's clear. So, all right, everybody, we're gonna run back to the bench and we're just gonna give you our final thoughts on it. Obviously, it's gonna be positive. This is one of the very few reviews that you're really not gonna have anything bad to say about this gun except the mag release. But we'll get back to the bench, we'll give you our final thoughts. All right, everybody, so our final thoughts clearly is very positive. I love the Ruger Twin 22. It's one of my favorite rifles. This is not a biased review. Ruger is not paying me to say any of this, but I like it because of the custom ability, the accuracy, and the simplicity of shooting it. You can pick these up on sale sometimes for under two for around two hundred dollars. I bought this one for about two seventy five on sale. Um, they're very affordable. You can get strip receivers from Brownells, whether it be a non-Picatinny or Picatinny rail made into the receiver, between $60 and $80 just for strip receivers. Parts availability is amazing. And plus, Ruger's warranty is absolutely fantastic. So if you were thinking about picking one of these up, definitely do not hesitate. They're one of the best 1022 rifles. I'm keeping the barrel pointed down because I'm at my range and I don't want to sweep anybody in a bad direction. That's why we have a chamber right here. So just want to remind everybody, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you like this video, comment down and see what type of customizations you want to see on these firearms. And we're going to do our best to help you out. I want to thank you for your long support and have a good day, everybody. We'll see you soon.